Until the mid-19th century, Mother Nature was the only producer of ice, and the idea of man-made ice seemed preposterous. It was a Florida doctor who, in need of ice to cool feverish patients, invented the ice machine. The technology took a few years to refine, and then they were ready to chill. Today's commercial ice makers churn out ice on demand, allowing restaurants and other businesses to keep things cool at all times. To make one, machinery folds the edges of stainless steel sheets so they can be assembled into the ice maker frame and exterior panels. Meanwhile, copper uncoils over a roller, which removes the curl from the metal. A machine spiked with blades then punches the copper. In one action, it cuts numerous slits in the strip and slices it to the correct length. The notched strips are now ready to be assembled into a grid. This grid is part of the evaporator. It's here that liquid refrigerant will evaporate as it pulls heat from the water to freeze it into ice cubes. This copper tubing is central to that process. An automated arm bends it into a configuration called the serpentine, producing a coil that will fit on the back of the evaporator. As liquid refrigerant moves through it, it will draw heat out of the water. This machine flattens the tubing, giving it greater surface contact with the evaporator to facilitate heat transfer. Then, it's into a big washing machine to remove any oils or oxides on the parts. A worker now applies strips of tin silver solder to the evaporator's backplate. This acid solution will act as a bonding agent. He then places the evaporator, solder side down, on the serpentine tubing and locks the assembled parts in an iron rig. He hoists the rig into an oven to melt the solder strips between the back plate and tubing, fusing the parts together. Then, it's into an ultrasonic bath, where high-frequency sound waves clean off lingering contaminants. An inspector now examines the evaporator to confirm that the parts have been solidly fused. Next, he installs pipes on an ice maker side panel. These are the lines that supply refrigerant to the machine. He turns the assembly around and removes the caps on the compressor to connect it to a network of pipes. The compressor will force refrigerant through these pipes in a continuous cycle of heating and cooling to eventually produce ice. He brazes the joints to seal the connections. He attaches a fan to another side panel. It will blow cool air onto the radiator to cool the refrigerant and help convert it back into a liquid. Now he pumps the refrigerant into the system and measures the flow to ensure it receives a precise amount. Meanwhile, at another station, they assemble the ice bin. It's time to test this ice maker. Water flows continuously over the surface of the evaporator grid as the temperature inside the cells drops below freezing. Impurities like minerals are washed away as the water turns to ice, and the result is crystal clear cubes, almost 3 kilograms in just 15 minutes. Finally, they install the front panel on the unit. This job is done and it's time for a little liquid refreshment, on ice of course.